Welcome to the Nightly Crypto Report. Today is March 29th, 2022, and this is Crypto Housewife. So how are you guys doing? I have a lot of news to go over today, so let's get right into it. So Bitcoin is down a little bit. We're st still trying to hit that $48,000 point. Ethereum holding steady at $3,400. And a few other things are up. Shib it was up a little bit, even though it's red there, but it's up over you know the past week it's up doing pretty good and dogecoin fell back a little bit it was at 15 cents and cardano dollar 19 almost at dollar 20. so yeah we're not too bad today i mean there's a little bit of uh, uh of red but uh not not any major dips so s p 500 green on the screen markets don't close for another 44 minutes so yeah nice green on the screen good day good day and oil futures real quickly so oil futures and lower on apparent progress in russia ukraine peace talks okay we'll see what happens i don't want to get my hopes up too much here but we need some good news some more good news i mean <laughs> you know it'd be nice if this would come to an end sooner than later and i just want to give an honorable mention here to modern Oki inu uh, this is a token that I'm into. I got into a number of months ago. I have a playlist about it. It's called Mononoke Inu. And it's uh, it's a higher risk play and it's speculative. And I'm in it, uh, like I said. Um, but today they are pumping because of uh, news. They're up 29%, uh, roughly, um, I think it's 29%. Anyway, uh, let's call it under 30% for the day because they're going to have some really good news coming out tomorrow. I just made a video on it. If you want to check it out, Mononoke Inu in my playlist. Uh, not financial advice. This is a higher risk play. I got in uh, this, I got in like at a higher price and then I got a dollar cost averaged in to bring down my, my, um, my average price <laughs> so higher risk play uh, it's a new uh new project newer maybe six months old and they're developing a play to earn game and uh, they kind of strung us along a bit so like i said high risk but i'm in you know pretty at a decent price and we'll see what happens so i'm in for a lot for the long haul if i lose money on it so be it so again not financial advice do your own research Shiba Inu and please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button. Shiba Inu, uh, I'll come back to Shiba in a minute, so I'll just sorry about that. So Russia, Russia opens, Russia open to accepting Bitcoin in exchange for oil, according to Energy Commissioner report. <laughs> I wish I could change exchange oil for Bitcoin. It's not that I have any oil. <laughs> or Bitcoin for that matter. I use Bitcoin to trade. Like uh, when I have to get into something to get into something else. So I, I, I handle Bitcoin, you know. So I use it, I, it's a facilitator for me, basically. So anyway, a high-ranking Russian official says that the nation is considering accepting Bitcoin as payment for its fuel exports. Good old Bitcoin, I'm telling you. Uh, the world is changing fast people are getting on board everybody it doesn't matter you know this is huge like it, it's huge of course we're you know russia <laughs> so yeah it, it's just a case study for bitcoin right now while the world is very turbulent and we see that bitcoin fits into everything and uh yeah in exchange for oil so i'm not surprised because i think russia was saying oh if you want to buy our oil you're gonna have to pay in ruble forget the u.s dollar but we'll see about that too just uh just a heads up there so yeah um candidate for prime minister of canada pays for his lunch with bitcoin via the lightning network yes canada i'm telling you canada and crypto um Canada is a forerunner in crypto, especially in acceptance. Like I said, they had the first spot Bitcoin ETF last year uh, released. I remember that vividly. I remember it. The United States still hasn't got, gotten out the spot Bitcoin ETF yet. Come on, guys. Let's do this. <laughs> so, yeah. So he pays for his lunch with good old Bitcoin and another one about him. So leadership candidate vows to make Canada blockchain capital of the world. 
Leadership Canada. Now, this is in Canada. Vows to make Canada blockchain capital of the world. Yes. So the conservative leadership candidate, Pierre Polyviv, intends to make Canada the blockchain capital of the world. So the member of parliament wants to put Canadians back in control of their money. Hmm. So last month, conservative conservatives called for a crypto framework introducing a bill in parliament. So we'll see what happens. I just love this logo here. Just love it. Yeah, never know. I'm telling you, Bitcoin is catching on. Crypto is still in its infancy. And oh my goodness, it's just a good time to be into crypto. I love crypto. I just love talking about it. So so Cardano, I love Cardano too. Founder calls for cryptocurrency bill of rights to promote true decentralization. Good old Charles Hoskinson. And you guys know he is also a co-founder of ethereum yes so charles the creator and founder of cardano has urged the cryptocurrency community to establish a bill of rights for the industry which will illustrate the concept of true decentralization there's kind of a tug of war between centralized and decentralized of course and yeah, with governments and then the rest of us you know is like yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll be a, a tug of war for a while. So Hoskinson noticed, Hoskinson noted that for the cryptocurrency industry to be truly decentralized, its players need to collectively figure out the core meaning of decentralization, adding, we have to write some sort of constitution for these things. We have to decide what is the Bill of Rights for the use of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. Yes. Yes, yes. Charles is always thinking, and that's why I love the Cardano project. I just, uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to say anything. I don't want to shill it. Um, it speaks for itself. MicroStrategy borrows against Bitcoin to buy more Bitcoin. I never thought, uh, this is mind-boggling, but okay. Silvergate Bank has loaned MicroStrategy subsidiary, MicroStrategy, MacroStrategy, sorry. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. MicroStrategy subsidiary, MacroStrategy, $215 million to add to its Bitcoin holdings. Wow. Okay. Let's see this. So the business intelligent firm is the world's largest corporate Bitcoin holder with around 124 124,000 Bitcoins on its balance sheet. Oh, let's eyeball all that. Okay. I told you about this page. You should bookmark it. Right up here. So Bitcoin treasuries. You eyeball this. Uh, it's kind of like the who own, who's who in uh, public companies that own Bitcoin. And they have other things down here too. Countries and governments that own Bitcoin. Private companies that own Bitcoin. ETFs that own Bitcoin. So eyeball that. Stay on top. Bookmark it. <laughs> it's interesting. So here we are. Micro strategy. And they're saying 125,000 Bitty coins. Yes. <laughs> then we have Tesla, Galaxy Digital Holdings, Voyager Digital Canada. Look how many Canadian flags are here. Of course, Americans too. But yeah, Canada is a big player. And yeah, that's so cool. Countries and governments, Bulgaria, Ukraine, El Salvador, Finland, Georgia government. So private companies that own Bitcoin, Block.1. Block, block. And Tizo, Stone Ridge. Nice ETFs. Okay, Grayscale. Grayscale, I do I have done a few videos on Grayscale. I did some on their their Bitcoin uh, cash trust. Bitcoin cash trust. So do we see it down here? No, we don't. But anyway, so the world is changing, and I'm telling you, getting back here, ETFs. Wall Street loves Bitcoin and they're starting to love altcoins too and other layer ones. So I, I can almost predict a future on that one. I know where that's going. <laughs> Normally I tell you I don't have a crystal ball, I can't predict the future, but hey, when Wall Street likes something, yeah, it takes time to get that ball rolling, to get the SEC to uh, to you know open up the floodgates, so to speak. But when it does, look out, look out. So for me, it's a question of what other what other cryptos are they going to put into these ETFs? And, and of course, uh, they picked out like Solana, Car uh, I think Cardano, um, Matic. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's all out there online. Grayscale, what are, what's Grayscale choosing to put into their trust? 
and ETFs and, you know, it tells you something about the future of those, those projects. Look, get a load of this. A Bored Ape NFT was just sold for a measly $114. How did this happen? Yeah, I looked over the a sad ape. Okay, so an unusually low price sale of a Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT for just a hun almost $115 has left NFT enthusiasts' tongues wagging, considering the cheapest available uh, Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT selling for 106.8 Ethereum or $363,000. That's the cheapest. And out of the blue, $115 it sold for? Is that, of, you know, over $363? What happened? According to Etherscan data on Monday, the seller under the name of cchan.eth sold board eight number 835 on OpenSea for 115 DAI. DAI is a stable coin whose value is pegged to the dollar, meaning the entire the entity received only $114.74, while $5.74 went to OpenSea fees. Oh no, what happened here? Someone accepted 150 DAI on their ape thinking it's ETH. Yeah, maybe. Maybe they thought they were going to get $380,000 uh, worth of Ethereum. But no, they had it in DAI. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Someone got lucky there. Wow. And somebody got unlucky there. Well, that's, that's just terrible <laughs> that's terrible oh my goodness yeah you got to watch it i heard about that you got to make sure you're in the right currency when you list something for sale as an nft on one of these sites make just make sure because believe me there's people who who look for mistakes look to call it snapping up a deal uh bottom feeding so be careful be careful oh my goodness all right dear shibit dear shibit inu crypto fans mark your calendars for march 30th to Mari. All right. So Shiba Inu wrote a tweet and people are kind of excited. So I'll just read the tweet. So Shiba Army, see, the world is full of things more powerful than us, but you know how to catch a ride. You can go places. Stay tuned for March 30th. Woof. <laughs> That's early ship. <laughs> March 28th. And today being the March March 29th. And tomorrow being the 30th. So let's see what happens. So see, the world is full of things more powerful than us. But if but if you know how to catch a ride, you can go places. So how to catch a ride? So what is coming up? What do they have cooking? Catch a ride. Could this be Shiba Inu Air Miles? Shiba Inu Rewards? I, I, that's what I jumped to. I'm thinking, thinking something with transportation and either paying in ship or having rewards in Shiba Inu. What do you think? I could be, I, I, obviously I'm probably wrong. I mean, <laughs> there's, probably, there's a billion uh, possibilities. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. So good for you, Shiba Inu. Okay, that, that's where this came in, Shib's chart. So where are we <clears throat> for today? We're, I think we're down. Yeah, we're down a little bit today. That's all right. Tomorrow's a new day, Shiba Inu. But look how it's climbed this week. Seven days. Yes. Nice. Out of curiosity. Um, I do this every once in a while. All my videos. Not not with you guys. Uh, one, two, not on this um, Nightly Crypto Report. But I usually do this on other, other videos when I get into a crypto. So if I had $100 US, how many Shibs would I get? So one, two, three... And... 3 million, 3.6 million ships. They need to put decimals in this because I'm always counting this thing out and hoping that I don't make a mistake. So for 100 US dollars, you get 3.6 million ships, plus you'd have to pay ether fees to trade. All right, good. Where was I here? Here, Aurux, Aurux. U-R-U-S gets listed on KuCoin. Yes, if you are into this coin, you're happy today. <laughs> Very happy. Now let's just jump over here. Up. I'll refresh this up 21%, almost 22%. Now let's look at this chart. Okay, so this is their all-time chart. Let's go back to 
So we start back in February 2021. And it was around, you know, a little over $10, $13 in the 20 somethings. And it got down to, well, yeah. And then, then it pumped up to uh, $283. Wow. And then pull back in like everything else. 2022. And now we're up to, what did we say? $107. <clears throat> yes. And what's interesting about this coin, the token actually, sorry, calling it a coin, 1 million in max supply. And, and when that happens, when there's a very low max supply, it doesn't come out of the gate at fraction of a penny, like uh, 0. 0.000. No, no, it's it, a lot of times they come out in dollars because their max supply is low. So a million in max supply, let put it to you this way. I think Bitcoin is going to have, is it 21 million max? And I think they're roughly 18 million or so. So this is 1 million <laughs> max supply. Something interesting. It's just rare. Um, do they have a good project? I don't know. I'm, I'm new to this. I, I don't know. I don't own this, but it's, it caught my eye today. Uh, let's look at their website. So this is their website. You know, I just eyeballed it a little bit today to check it out to see what all the hubbub is about so beautiful website i gotta give them that so yeah they got launched on kucoin big that's a big deal so good for you guys let's talk robin hood robin uh, robin hood adds four additional hours to extended trading for clients we all know about robin hood we're waiting for shiba inu to be listed on robin hood it's been talked about for months and months and months so uh, as some Robinhood clients head back to the office following the pandemic, the stock trading app, which has experienced a slowdown in volume this year, is now offering extra hours in the morning and evening for its investors. Robinhood said Tuesday it is adding four extra hours to the trading day. In a push to eventually provide 24-7 equities trading, Robinhood said it will be available, available from 7 a.m., to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. That's really wild. Okay, so good for you guys, Robinhood. So let's look at their stock. I do follow Robinhood stock. Uh, oh, come on. <laughs> there we go. So this is a, a day chart. One, one candle equals one day. So as you can see, we're up today. We are up. So we started out maybe around $13 and up to 16. Oh, and up to 16.30 or so. That's a big jump, $3 in a day. That's good news. Robinhood really pulled back in and kind of sucked for a while. It was hovering around, yeah, nine. the low was 9.93. And then poof, good volume here. I like to see things going up and also like to see good, good green volume too. So um, Robinhood, not financial advice. None of this is, I'm just, just relaying you guys the news, but I do, I am into Robinhood. I can't use the app. I'm in Canada. I, I do believe it's only in the United States still. So they had their IPO and it just kind of dumped. But you know what? Typical IPO goes up real quick, pulls back in. Okay. And then we had our, our you know, our crypto kind of market coming down. But they don't just trade crypto. They trade stocks. You can, you can trade stocks on the app too. And they, in my opinion, they have a, a really good crypto future ahead of them if they could just add more cryptos i mean come on let's ship it in it. why not <laughs> why not what are you waiting for robin hood okay oh i wanted to just mention digibyte um I, I did a few videos this week on digibyte i do hold digibyte now digibyte is a fork off of bitcoin and oh my gosh trading at what, what are we trading at three cents well it, it bottomed out here at 1.5 cents a penny and a half for hmm, almost two months and people made some money just recently if they bought in here and like i say it's a fork off of bitcoin it's a layer one it's a solid project smart contracts uh, and they're talking metaverse now and 
Digibyte has been around for eight years. I am into Digibyte. I'm holding long. I'm holding long. And I wish them success. Very, very clever development team. They don't hide their faces. They're, oh my goodness. They've been around eight years. Like I said, Bitcoin's been around 13 years. And like I said, the, the Bitcoin forks, if you don't know about Bitcoin, Bitcoin forks, look it up. It's quite interesting. And that's how I found them. Cause I was like, okay, what's related to Bitcoin? Like, Hey, well, something related to Bitcoin is something off of Bitcoin. And so that's what I, that's how my, how I initially found Digibyte. And I said, oh, I'll get in. And it was pennies. So I, of course I got in and it was, and I've been holding and a lot there's, you know, they have a very loyal community, not financial advice. Anything could happen. This thing could pull back in it could go sideways. Uh, it could go up. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just hopeful for the future. And yeah, so you might want to, you know, check them out. Just, I just wanted to give them an honorable mention to you because the uh, last three days, well, it pumped up here. Well, it started to run up and then just went right up here. And I put out a few videos. If you want to get yourself caught up on that. So what else? I always, I checked the ruble because it kind of tells me what's going on here. Sentiment. So you remember this is before the war started, the war started and it just dumped. Russia's ruble just dumped and now it's climbing. Look where it is now. It's almost back to where it was. So remember, today we were talking about uh, oil futures and lower on apparent progress in Russia-Ukraine peace talks. Uh, is there is there ruble uh, reflecting that positive sentiment for those guys? I don't know. Kind of something something's cooking. <laughs> something's up with them. So yeah, we'll see. And let's end it with Axie Infinity. Ooh, bit of drama here. Axie Infinity's Rona Network suffers a $625 million exploit. Ooh, it may be the largest exploit in DeFi history, folks. Yeah, Axie, I hate, you know, hate to say this, but Tuesday lost over $265 million in USD and Ether. Okay, the attacker, an attacker used hacked private keys in order to forge fake withdrawals. Within two transactions, as seen on Etherscan. Wow. Okay. That's too bad. We'll see what happens. I don't think this is over. It's only just the beginning. Who knows? Uh, you see somebody uh, driving around in a new Lambo and nice fancy watch when you know they were taking a bus. Well, <laughs> did they get some Axie money here? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, the least some tracks even if it's not on the blockchain you can't figure out who exactly stole it well you might you know they're flashing cash <laughs> it may be a clue <laughs> so yeah we'll see how this works out um good luck with that and i'm gonna uh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna watch this so if you guys could please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell i would appreciate it and stay tuned for more videos and i will catch you guys later bye bye